Hello and welcome. My name is Lexi Chong and here I like to talk about luxury beauty. Today we're talking about the new Dior lip balms. So about a year ago, Dior released a new lip balm. It was a translucent lip balm, came in a satin finish. I have that here. But just recently they have released a whole slew of colored lip balms and they have two different finishes. So they have satin and a matte finish. Now, if you look at the website, it does say it comes in satin, matte, and velvet finishes, but if you actually look at their options, they are all designated as either satin, matte, or natural. If you look at the natural, it also says satin. So I'm not sure if they are adding more finishes or not, but right now there are a ton of different shade options. The Dior website has all of the shade options. Sephora just started carrying these as well, and they have uh, some of them, like probably close to, not quite half, but close to half. And this lip balm, let me just show you the packaging and everything on these. So it's the same as the lipsticks. So if you have a Dior lipstick from the new, the newer selections from the past year, they are all refillable now. The lip balm packaging is the same, so you can buy refills, you can keep this packaging to insert things in there, which makes it really great when you pick up something like this, which is one of the new look limited edition packagings. So you can keep this packaging forever and just add refills to it. Both the lipsticks and the lip balms fit in these packagings. They are exactly the same. So these are three and a half grams and they are made in France. And according to Dior, there is a floral complex. So you do have a slight floral fragrance to this as well. It says it's concentrated in peony, pomegranate flower, fig blossom, and red hibiscus flower. And all of those extracts are in there for more beautiful lips day after day. These lip balms have 95% natural origin ingredients and there is supposed to be 24 hours of hydration. And these lip balms in the matte satin, and again, they say velvet finishes, are the result of breakthrough formulations, smooths, and it naturally enhances lips. So we've got a whole range of colors that are in here. You know, you've got some that are very, very light, very sheer. You've got others that you can build up more to like a light lipstick level. And, you know, these are a really great product in my opinion. So just like the lipsticks, you have the Christian Dior belt along the center here. And again, these are refillable. So let's take a look at the ones that I have. So we're going to start by taking a look at the Dior lip balm. You can see I've been using mine. So this is the one that I picked up. Uh, I don't know if it was a year ago or if it was during the summer, but it was 2021 and I've been using it, you know, on and off since then. And this is the original 000 in satin and they now have this in a matte finish as well. So it's just completely translucent. And I have to say, it feels kind of like a firm, slightly waxy balm. So it's comfortable on the lips, but it's very thin on the lips. So if you're looking for a lot of hydration and kind of that creamier texture, you're not really gonna get that from this satin balm. And then we also have 388 Dior Essence, which is another satin balm here. And I have to say, I thought this was gonna be more of a soft pink, but look at that with the translucent. You can see that it is, <laughs> there's a little bit of pink, but even when you build this up, it does not look anything like the actual bullet color. And if you look closely at this, you can see there's a little bit of shimmer in this as well. It's not, it's not big enough to call it glitter, but it's very, very finely milled. So there is a little bit of shimmer there that helps reflect the light a little bit but you don't really see any pink color on the lips. And we'll look at some lip swatches in a couple minutes. So then we have 586 Dior Bloom, which is a satin balm as well. And you can see how, how much deeper that can be when you build it up. And this is really more of a 
mid-tone neutral rose. I think it's a really beautiful shade. I think it's gonna work well for a lot of people. And then let's actually finish up the satins first. So this is seven to eight new rose. And this comes in the new look packaging. So you can see you've got the beautiful imprint on here as well. So I really love this. This is really more of a rosewood shade. You can see it's gonna be a little bit warmer than the Dior Bloom. And you've got kind of that mix of like brown and red and rose kind of all blended together in here. So these are all satin. And then I did pick up one of the matte finishes as well in 200 Terabella. So you can see here on the bullet that you have more of that velvety appearance on the outside, but then when you use it, it, you know, obviously that's gonna go away a little bit. So this is 200. And I have to say the matte formula does feel a little different than the satin formula. So let's take a look at some lip swatches while we go over my thoughts on these. Now, starting with the satin translucent balm, I have to say that I think this is okay. Like I like the balm, I think it's fine, but it's not anything special or unique. If I were to purchase this again, I would try the matte one and see what the texture on there is like. I do find that this one, which again is one of the originals, I feel like it's a little bit more firm and a slightly waxier feeling than the colored versions in the satin formula. And that could just be because this is one of the originals. I bought it right when it was released. So perhaps they have made some alterations since then. And then moving on to the 388 Dior Essence, I picked this one up because I thought it'd be a really soft pink on the lips and it's limited edition. So it's like, ooh, maybe this is like a really great color. But I have to say I'm disappointed in this one because it is so similar to the translucent shade. You can't really tell a difference on the lips. I'm not even sure why they made this uh, limited edition. There's, there's really nothing great about this one. I, I would pass on that one personally. And then the 586 Dior Bloom, I think this is a great, beautiful mid-rose pink and you can wear it very sheerly or build this one up. And when you wear this sheerly or wear, when you wear any of these satin balms sheerly, you just feel like a little bit of like a satin texture on your lips. When you build it up more, you get a little bit more high shine. But again, because these are a thinner, waxier formula than like a lipstick, your your, when you put on more and more product, it still doesn't feel thick or heavy on your lips. These are not like super creamy in that sense. You know, the, the formula is a little bit firmer. So the more you apply, you're still applying in thin layers. So it never feels heavy or thick. And then seven to eight new rose. This is one of my favorite purchases recently. And I love the rosewood shade putting it on very sheerly, you don't notice quite so much of the wood tones in there, but more of the rose. And then when I build it up, I see more of that true rosewood. And it really does look more like a light lipstick level of pigmentation, but it's got that shine or that sheen from a lip balm. So I think it's a really beautiful, very versatile shade. I absolutely love it. It's limited edition, but I do hope that, you know, they make this color part of the permanent line and then 200 Terabella in the matte finish. This one does feel a little bit different on the lips than the satin formula. The satin formulas, they feel, you know, you have kind of that glossier texture on there. Definitely no stickiness at all with any of these products, but I expected the matte to feel more like the Hermes lip enhancers, which are kind of a matte lip balm also. Those have a little bit of a powder texture to them, whereas this matte balm doesn't. And as a matter of fact, I feel like when you build this up on your lips, it doesn't look matte or dry. It looks more, it looks more matte than a satin. So you can see where you get the, the name matte from it, but it doesn't have that powdery finish that is so often associated with matte finishes. So it doesn't look as shiny, but there is still a little bit of a sheen when you build this up. And I have to say that it still feels like these lip balms on your lips. You don't have any of that powdery texture. It perhaps doesn't feel quite, uh, like there doesn't feel like there is quite as much slip between your lips with the balm compared to the satin. 
but there still is. It still feels like you have a lip balm on. So it's very comfortable. It does feel hydrating. I have to say 24 hour hydration with these lip balms. I don't agree with that personally. Um, you know, I have used the translucent one overnight and so forth for many times. And it does keep my lips lightly moisturized throughout the night, but by the morning it is gone. It's something that I consider more of a summer weight lip balm during the winter when I want more like repair and healing on my lips, I use something else. So I feel like these lip balms are great for during the day, especially, you know, if you're wearing a mask or something, you just want something light and thin on your lips for moisture. They're great to add some hydration and some color, or if you want to build it up for like a lighter lipstick look for, you know, I think that's really great for spring in particular, as we're getting into lighter, fresher makeup looks. I think lip balms are definitely the way to go. I'm like really into colored lip balms right now, but I would have to say overall, I think these are a great product. I like the satin and the matte finishes on these, but I wouldn't buy them for healing of your lips and I wouldn't count on 24 hours of hydration. I do feel the need to reapply these after a couple of hours. Uh, they, you know, because it is a thinner formula, it does eventually sort of soak in and wear off a little bit faster than some thicker lip balms may. So I do like to reapply these every two, two to three hours. Now let's take a few, a look at some of the other colored lip balms that have come out recently. We've got the Hermes Lip Enhancers. This one here is shade 14 Rose Apricot. And I'm this again, is it has a pH indicator in here. So it will get a little bit darker in a minute so you can see the color, but it's mostly translucent with a little bit of peach in there. And the texture of this is very thin and waxy, just like the Dior, but these lip enhancers also seem to feel like there's a little bit of powder in there. There's a little bit of a powdery finish, which the Dior Matte Balm does not have. The Dior Satin Balm definitely feels creamier than the Hermes Lip Enhancers. I like both of these products. Um, I find them different, but if I'm looking for hydration, I do find the Dior more hydrating than the Hermes. The Hermes, I love for like a light tint of color or just to, you know, top something during the day after my lipstick's wearing off and things like that. Whereas the Dior is something that I would consider putting on as my lipstick for the day as well. So this is the Dior Lip Enhancer in 14. I'll just show you one more of them. We've got 30 Rose Dete. And there are three shades in these lip enhancers, at least at the moment. And you can see that they're all gonna be a lot more sheer and lighter on the lips than any than the Dior, or at least these more pigmented ones. And again, the Dior, I mean, we've got lip balms that range in the neutral shades all the way up to like deeper, more pigmented reds and so forth as well. While we're looking at Hermes, let's take a look at the Hermes Poppy Lip Shine. So this is the only shade it comes in. It is a satin formula. And this has a thicker, balmier texture than the Dior. It's very creamy feeling on the lips if you pile it on, but if you put on just one layer, you get kind of a thinner layer, but it's still like a softer texture. It's not quite as firm as the Dior. And it only comes in this orange shade with the shimmer, and it does smell like oranges as well. So I personally absolutely love this. It's one of my favorites. The orange shade in particular makes me think of summer. So I tend to use it more during spring, summer, like the warmer months than I do the cooler months. So I feel like the Dior are more versatile for all year, just because you have so many color options. But the Hermes Poppy Lip Shine will always be a favorite of mine. Let's take a look at one of the lip tints from Chantecaille. These are their colored lip balms that came out, it might be like two years ago now. This one here is in the shade Madeira and probably a year and a half ago actually. They have four shades and I did use up the light pink one which was essentially translucent. This one here, Madeira, is one of my favorites. I also really like the plum shade, but you can see the pigmentation level is more on par with the more pigmented Dior ones. And again, the lighter pink one was more similar to the Dior Essence here. But texturally, these feel very comfortable on the lips. I don't find them to be hydrating though long term. I actually find them to be slightly drying on my lips. So the Dior, I actually prefer over the Chantecaille lip tints. 
but I do really like the colors and they do have a little bit more shine than the satin bombs. They have more of a glossy finish compared to the Dior satin bombs. A few more comparisons. We have these Tom Ford lip balms. This one in particular, uh, you know, it's gone off. It's actually my declutter pile, but this is from a few years ago. It's a zero two Apres Soleil. It's one of the Soleil Neige lip balms. And this... all right, let's try that again. I lowered the bullet a bit there, but this one has a soft satin finish. It does have some sheen can see in comparison, but um, yeah, you know, I liked these. I thought they were nice, easy to use, very comfortable on the lips while they're on, but I did find them a bit drying. So I like the Dior better in these as well. Another one we have is from La Perla. They recently started coming out with cosmetics towards the end of 2021. This is the shade 202 Petal Lips, and they have balms, lipsticks, and a few other like eye products. Um, this is going to be a satin balm. They are fragranced, uh, but it's a natural, like it's natural clean beauty. So the fragrance on here, I find it a little strong, but it reminds me of like Kosa lipsticks if you've used any of those. So kind of a similar fragrance. And you can see that the, this is a pretty pigmented lip balm. It's actually very pretty, very comfortable on the lips. I like the lip balm a lot. Don't love the fragrance, but the formula of this is very nice. I Again, I find it nice for like a hint of color, but not necessarily healing or hydration. Another one is the Byredo <laughs> lip balm. And I have it in this shade Argila. And this is kind of a nude shade. Look at the bullet here. You can see kind of the texture on there. Like see how it gets a little bumpy. It is not the same formula as the, the lipsticks at all. You actually kind of need to pile this on a little bit more to get kind of that creamy feeling on your lips. It's thinner, it's form firmer. And you know, I do find this one comfortable on the lips, but I really find it more like a light lipstick in coloration. I don't find any hydration benefits from this at all, aside from the fact that you've got something emollient on your lips at the time. But I do, I like the Byredo. I like the way it looks, but honestly, I um, I don't love the fragrance on this. And then we have a Givenchy lip balm. I actually went through a whole tube of this last year. This is in translucent. This is fairly similar to the Dior lip balm. I do find though that this one does help heal my lips slightly more. It also has kind of a light floral fragrance to it. Not the same as the Dior one, but um, yeah, you know, I do, I really like this one. It's my, this is my second. <laughs> and then this is one from Guerlain. This came out holiday 2020. It's the shade 001 but it is a translucent shade with like gold shimmer. And this one's gonna feel a little bit firmer on the lips as well. And I have to say it doesn't have, like when you build this up, you get more of a creamy feeling, but you really have to build it up to get there. I feel like the Dior, you need fewer layers to feel that level of comfort, if that makes sense. So I like both of them. But I don't know, I'm really enjoying these Dior balms. Another lip balm that's new that I've been really enjoying are the new Chanel Rouge Coco Balms. This one here is 912 Dreamy White. Put that right up here at the top. You can see that it's pretty much translucent. There's a little bit of shimmer. Let me use another color here as well. This one here is 922 Passion Pink. We're going to put that right here. So one of the things I wanted to show you with the Chanel lip balms is that you don't, you can't really get that sheer softer color with one layer with these, like a little bit, but these are always, if you're buying a pigmented color, it's always more pigmented than the Dior. Whereas the Dior with the pigmentation, even with the darker colors, if you put a sheer layer on, it looks very sheer and light on the lips. Whereas the Chanel always looks a bit more pigmented if that makes sense. Uh, I feel like th these are all satin bombs, by the way, they don't have a matte finish in the Chanel. These are all very comfortable on the lips. 
they, for me, they are hydrating. I have heard a couple of people say that certain shades have not been hydrating for them. And I can see that happening depending on the pigmentation levels and you know your lips and so forth. Everybody's skin chemistry is a little different. But um, you know, I have to say they just both feel very different on the lips. The Dior feels thinner and waxier. These feel creamier, softer, a little bit oilier than the Dior, but not oily like the Chanel Rouge Coco Flashes. I do have a video on these and I talk a little bit more about a comparison between the Chanel and the Dior lip balms in there as well. So I'll leave that linked down below. Overall, I have to say though that I really like both of those and they're just a little different to me. For hydration, I'd have to say for me, they are on par with each other for hydration while you are wearing them. And even like after it's starting to wear off, I don't think either of or any of these lip balms really give 24 hours hydration. I always feel like I need something else on my lips. So that those are all of my lip balm comparisons and I hope this was helpful. Final thoughts are, I think these Dior lip balms are great. I'm so glad that they have two different finishes. I like both the satin and the matte finish. I'm very, very pleased that the matte finish does not have that powdery texture on it, which I do find to be drying if you repeatedly wear it. I find them to be very comfortable on the lips. And these are definitely going to be a go-to lip product for me. Definitely interested in wearing more of these whenever I want like a lighter look. I love lipsticks, switch them out throughout the day all the time. So oftentimes I'll start with a, a deeper lipstick and as it wears off, add in a balm or something like that. But with these Dior lip balms, some of those more pigmented shades or even the Chanel Rouge Coco balms, those are ones that I can wear more as a lighter lip look and feel comfortable all day with those, um, you know, whether I want something deeper or something lighter. So I think the Dior lip balms are a really great choice, definitely worth checking out. If you're interested in, you know, limited edition packaging, don't forget to save your packaging, but I would highly recommend if you can find this one. It goes in and out of stock on the Dior website, but that's the only place I've seen it available. I would definitely pick it up. However, they do have the clear lip balm in this packaging as well that I have seen at other retailers like Nordstrom. So I will have everything linked down below in the description box. Definitely check it out. Also keep track of my shop list page just where I have all of the sales deals and new releases and everything linked. So I'll have a link to that in the description box, but it's a great resource. Most of the links are affiliated on there, which means I get a percentage of the sale back but it doesn't affect your purchase price. And I post everything, whether it's affiliated or not. So all of the links to anything new or any new locations to buy it, I put there regardless. So thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful and have a great day. Stay safe and healthy.